Hey, 42 here. There's no denying that the world is a scary place. On any given day, there are hundreds, perhaps thousands of things that could kill you, maim you, or interrupt your Wi-Fi connection. It's no surprise that people are afraid. Some of these fears make perfect sense, like acrophobia, the fear of heights, fanatophobia, the fear of dying, or keanophobia, the fear of Keanu Reeves. But other fears seem so ridiculous that it sounds like someone just made them up, which they did. There's arachibotorophobia, the fear of peanut butter sticking to the roof of your mouth. And anatodeophobia, the fear that you're being watched by a duck. But what about etiomophobia, the fear of an asteroid hitting Earth? Is that really so crazy? The answer to that question depends on two main factors. What kind of harm an asteroid would cause if it hit our little planet, and whether there is any genuine risk of this happening in the first place. I think most of us appreciate that a massive hunk of rock hurtling through space at 80,000 kilometers an hour is likely, to put it about as mild as Wensleydale, break a few plant pots upon its impact with our home. And you'd be right, but just how many plant pots are going to be turned back into wet clay depends largely on the size of the rock. It's widely accepted nowadays that the age of the dinosaurs was brought to an abrupt end by the arrival of a pretty large boulder. Estimated to measure about 10 kilometers across, the Chicxulub asteroid crashed into what we now call Mexico about 65 million years ago. The impact would have released more energy than a billion atom bombs or 12 cases of tequila, and left behind a crater 180 kilometers wide. Of course, none of those statistics would have impressed the dinosaurs, who despite ruling Earth for 135 million years, still didn't know how to open a beer, never mind do data analysis. Instead, they went through a rather unpleasant process called extinction, and haven't been heard from since. That's not surprising, given what happened after the asteroid ploughed into the planet. The sheer magnitude of force set off a chain reaction of earthquakes, landslides and tsunamis as far away as current day Argentina. Perhaps even worse on the apocalypse scale, the impact shot tiny bits of rock and other debris called spherules as high as 60 kilometers into the air. As these spherules began to fall back to Earth, they became superheated particles of intense infrared radiation. It literally rained fire across the world for hours. Scientists call this a thermal pulse, which sparked wildfires across the planet and burnt up most of the living creatures on land. But then things didn't get much better for the survivors. The dust driven into the atmosphere by the asteroid impact, mixed with soot from a planet's worth of fires, and blocked out the sun for a full year. With no sunlight, there was no photosynthesis, which meant vegetation and phytoplankton, the foundations of most ecosystems, were mostly wiped out. On the whole, what one might call cataclysmic. Recent studies, though, suggest that this dino killer asteroid might have been a cosmic joke compared to a predecessor thought to have hit Earth just over 3 billion years ago. It's likely to have left a crater 500 kilometers wide and would have blackened the skies and caused the surface of the oceans to boil. The crater is so large, it hasn't been possible to map it yet. The asteroid may have even been responsible for creating the system of plate tectonics that have defined geology and movement of continents ever since. So, it's clear that a really big asteroid hitting Earth would be a cause for concern. And by concern, I obviously mean blind panic, chaos and disorder. But what would happen if we got bumped by a smaller rock? Is that something worth worrying about? In February 2013, 
A meteor shower over the Oral Mountains in Russia saw a series of explosions in the sky as space rocks burnt up in the Earth's atmosphere. One object, estimated to be only 18 meters in diameter, exploded with such force that it injured more than a thousand people and created a sonic boom that blew out windows and damaged hundreds of buildings. That size, roughly 20 meters across, is considered to be the minimum an asteroid needs to be to be lethal. But I'm afraid that was just a taster of what we could expect if something larger headed our way. Since humanity's very short existence hasn't seen any catastrophic asteroid collisions, most of what we've deduced about the results of asteroid impacts come from geological research. But in 2017, a group of scientists at Southampton University got bored of learning and decided to see how we're all going to die. Because they used computer models to simulate 50,000 asteroid strikes around the globe. They modelled what would happen if asteroids ranging from 15 metres to 400 metres wide collided with Earth and then calculated the percentage of deaths that may be attributed to each of seven different effects. Shock waves, wind blasts, heat, flying debris, cratering, seismic shaking, and tsunamis. The study showed that if Earth gets hit by an asteroid, the thing you have to worry about the least is flying debris. Unless, of course, the asteroid is landing in your garden, in which case, there's no point worrying about anything. By far, the deadliest consequences of an asteroid impact will be wind and shock waves, which would theoretically account for 60% of all deaths combined. Perhaps you're wondering how wind could possibly be so dangerous. Well, this wind would make a hurricane look like that thing you do on the couch after you've eaten too many lentils. The closest example we might have is the wind pressure wave from a volcanic eruption, which have been known to knock over forests like a pile of matchsticks. Or the Tunguska event from 1908, when a comet or meteor exploded over Siberia and flattened miles of trees. But that still doesn't compare to the wind from a major asteroid impact, which would flatten entire cities. As for the shockwaves, they'd be powerful enough to rupture all your internal organs. Cheerful. The study showed that, on average, an asteroid 400 meters across would result in up to 300,000 casualties. There's no doubt that's a large hunk of rock but it's nowhere near the top end of the scale. The largest asteroid we know of is called Ceres, which at 975 kilometers in diameter is large enough to be classified as a dwarf planet. Then there's Vesta, which was also initially mistaken for a planet with a girth of 525 kilometers, followed by at least eight more asteroids over 250 kilometers wide none of which, you'll be pleased to hear, are headed our way. Of course, being hit by any of these would spell the end of the world, even YouTube. But an asteroid doesn't need to be anywhere near that big to cause a global catastrophe. Scientists estimate that any space rock bigger than one kilometer in size could bring about the end of human civilization. Fantastic. So, that brings us to the second factor in our Armageddon risk assessment. How likely are we to be hit by an asteroid? And how afraid should we really be? According to NASA, more than 100 tons of dust and sand-sized particles collide with Earth every day. But they are obviously all burnt up in the atmosphere. An asteroid the size of a car enters the Earth's atmosphere about once a year but mostly burns up before hitting the surface. Every 2,000 years, we receive a space rock about the size of a football field, which delivers significant damage, but to a local area. Asteroids that are large enough to threaten our life on Earth only show up about once every few million years, so the odds seem in our favor. 
asteroids, comets, and lost UFOs, whose orbits bring them into close proximity with Earth, are known as near-Earth objects. And astronomers have located approximately 93% of all near-Earth objects sized one kilometer or more. None of these pose any problems, except possibly for Tutatis, a two and a half kilometer asteroid shaped like a giant potato. Due to its interactions with different planets, Tutatis has a chaotic orbit, so scientists can't make accurate long-term predictions about its movements. We expect it to be headed in our general direction sometime around 2069, but we don't know how close that encounter will be. It will probably sail past without worries, but there is a chance we end up as potato salad. Of course, near-Earth objects smaller than a kilometre in size can still deliver a really nasty blow. And this is where things start to get a little worrying. Scientists have already classified dozens of asteroids as potentially hazardous, and research using infrared telescopes has confirmed that there are about 15,000 asteroids larger than 100 meters in size that still need to be identified. And then, if you widen the net to include all asteroids the same size or bigger than the one that exploded over Russia, we're talking about millions. That's problematic, because if an unidentified asteroid, or an asteroid whose orbit was altered in some way, was detected heading towards Earth, we would need a pretty significant heads up to plan our response. Very recently, NASA's Center for Near-Earth Object Studies ran a series of simulations which showed that even if we had six months warning of an asteroid heading for Earth, we'd be screwed. Bruce Willis has refused to help out again, and we just don't have the technology to prevent a collision. It turns out lasers aren't really a viable option for disintegrating asteroids, and nuclear weapons are more likely to just shatter the space rock into a massive shrapnel that still causes widespread devastation. To try to solve this problem, NASA's Planetary Defense Coordination Office currently has two options it sees as potentially promising. The first is what's called a gravity tractor. Quite simply, a large spaceship will be sent to fly next to the asteroid, and because that spaceship has a small amount of gravity, the asteroid would be gradually pulled off course and sail safely past Earth. Another alternative is a kinetic impactor, which involves using a spacecraft as a battering ram to smash into an asteroid and knock it off course. This idea will be tested next year as part of a mission NASA has dubbed the Double Asteroid Redirection Test, or DART. This follows on from the failed Solar Helix Asteroid Redirection Test, or SHART, which was a bit embarrassing for everyone involved. The target for the DART mission will be an asteroid called Didymus, or, more specifically, a smaller moonlet that orbits Didymus. The larger asteroid, Didymus A, is about 780 meters in diameter, whilst the moonlet, Didymus B, is about 160 meters, making it typical of the asteroids that are more likely to threaten our well-being on Earth. Didymus A and B are not dangerous, but they will pass close to Earth in October 2022 at which time the DART probe will crash into the moonlet at 6.6 meters per second, hopefully deflecting it off course by just 1%. It's comforting to know that there are plans afoot to build an asteroid defense weapon, but that doesn't help us much if we don't see the big rock heading for us in the first place. With technologies currently available, we basically only see asteroids when we have a telescope pointed directly at them. That leaves a whole lot of sky uncovered, as proved by a number of occasions in which asteroids have slipped through. The asteroid I mentioned earlier that exploded over Russia was totally unexpected. More concerning still was asteroid 2019 OK, 
a 57 to 130 meter wide space rock that passed just 73,000 kilometers from Earth in July 2019. That's less than one fifth of the distance to the moon. And astronomers had no idea it was coming. By the way things have been going, I'm surprised it wasn't followed up by 2020 not okay. Currently, 140 meter and larger asteroids are being discovered at a rate of about 500 per year. Which means we're looking at a few decades before all the unidentified asteroids are mapped. Fortunately, in 2025, NASA and an organization called the Planetary Society are launching a spacecraft called the Neo Surveyor which they believe will be able to detect 90% of near-Earth objects of 140 meters or larger. Whilst asteroids in this size range are unlikely to end the world as we know it, they could be capable of setting human civilization back a few centuries and killing hundreds of millions of people. Those consequences sound terrifying, but before you grab your tin spaghetti and head for your backyard bunker, take solace in the fact that probability is on your side. The chances of a major asteroid event occurring in your lifetime are ridiculously low. Yes, I know the dinosaurs said the exact same thing, but really, what did they know? Thanks for watching. Check out my new podcast, Random Interesting Facts, available on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and anywhere else you get your podcasts. Link in the description below. Thanks.